Welcome everyone to the Michigan Association of Secondary School Principals podcast series featuring great discussions, insight, and resources on all things related to education and administration. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to season five of the MASSP podcast. My name is Ryan Casey, and I'm really excited to have uh, two special guests joining me today to talk about social media and how to use social media to uh, impact or improve on your school or building culture. And uh, these two people are some of the best at it. And so I'm very fortunate that I was able to get them both uh, together at the same time. I know guys, you are super busy with everything going on with the school year and face-to-face, back to virtual, back and forth instruction happening. Um, so today we have with us the principal at West Ottawa High School. We have uh, Jason Reinecke, as well as from principal of Howell High School, Jason Schrock. So fellas, thanks for joining us today. And um, it's obvious that I am not formally trained in podcasting because I think rule number one is you're not supposed to have two people on the podcast with the same first name, but we're going to do our best to get through this. But thanks again for being here. Hey, really thanks appreciate you having us. us. Yeah, you bet. So I'm going to jump right in. So um, uh, for those who don't follow maybe uh, either the Jasons or their high schools on social media, I in particular follow them on Twitter and it's just such wonderful engagement that I see all the time from both of you, from your accounts, from uh, teachers or even students or, or community members um, engaging with the account, or maybe it's a specific hashtag you're using at your district or your building. So um, we'll start at West Ottawa. How are, how are you able to get such a strong presence, if you will, on social media for your building? And um, also, as you're talking about that, can you just share all the different platforms you're on? I mentioned Twitter, that's where I follow you, but I'm sure there's other things you're doing to en engage um, your stakeholders as well. Yeah, so here, here at West Ottawa High School, uh, where we use the hashtag go Whoa, uh, which has become very popular. Um, if you turn back the clock about seven or eight years, um, and I'm gonna give a shout out to a former assistant principal, Jordan Beal, who's now a principal at Hudsonville High School. He was instrumental. Um, in with kind of this this push for social media presence and you coupled it with um, us going one-to-one -one, uh, with putting devices in teachers hands six years ago um, what we what what happened was it was almost a perfect storm of Twitter was gaining in popularity it was an avenue to tell our story share the good things that are happening um, our teachers were starting to uh, use tech more. Um, so we engaged them in, you know, uh, chats and, uh, you know, learning from each other, learning from uh, people from different districts uh, through the use of Twitter. And, and that's really when Twitter kind of, um, you know, exploded, if you will, um, for, for West Ottawa High School. It certainly has evolved over the years and um, as have some other social media platforms. I would say primarily uh, Twitter we use the most at West Ottawa High School. Instagram we use quite a bit, a uh, little bit different of uh, a philosophy and what its intentions uh, are, but um, we, we do use Instagram for communication and some celebrating of good things happening here. Facebook, uh, we use a little bit, not a ton, and I would say the same with with uh, Snapchat. Um, we kind of leave that. Uh, that's kind of the student's world right now. One thing we've learned is uh, through kind of the the course of this Twitter journey is that you know teenagers don't necessarily love to be in the same platform as uh, the adults when when you're talking about the everyday. Um, social media. Uh, and so I think we found a, we've struck a nice balance right now where, where students still join in our Twitter celebrations with good things and, you know, telling our story. Uh, but we're also not as adults trying to, you know, um, cramp their world, if you will, because they, they enjoy their, their own social media. So, you know, those are the big ones we use. And like I said, it's, it's been, a, it's been a, a, about a seven year journey with Twitter. Awesome. That was cool that I, I was wondering if people are on, you know, Snapchat and TikTok and things like that. So Jason, how about at uh, Howell? Same question for you. Well, we have a very similar journey, Jason, in terms of uh, starting a, a Twitter presence within the school district um, using some hashtags. 
And, and I would say that it, it wasn't just a building approach. We really had some district leadership, uh, myself, other building principals, superintendent. Uh, in, in Howell, you'll see two commonly used hashtags, whether it's uh, hashtag one Howell or hashtag Highlander Nation. Those are things that we, that we use when we are uh, celebrating student or staff accomplishments, um, or even if we're <laughs> introducing a snow day. You know, that's a very, very quick and easy way to get messages out to students and families um, using social media. And it, we just started real, real slow by using social media to celebrate. Um, and then as, as we used it to celebrate, to recognize students, to share quick videos, of things going on outside the classroom, inside the classroom, accomplishments. Uh, then we started to use it more on a professional level as well. And we've had the opportunity as a, as a district to engage our, our principal team in uh, some, some Twitter chats. And it's been really exciting over the years as we've done that to watch how our staff, while they might not be maybe reading the same books or articles, they're watching us engage with each other um, around topics, around things that we're reading. Uh, and, and as a result, you know, the, the following each other, the following different programs uh, and, and giving each other kudos over social media has, has evolved as well. And to echo what Jason said regarding social media audiences, there's definitely a different audience for every social media platform. So being able to choose our intentions, um, Twitter is very commonly used professionally uh, a, a lot of our athletic teams, Twitter accounts, um, pretty easy to, to get everybody on board with that. And as we start seeing things like TikTok or Snapchat evolve, uh, more of our student leadership groups and our advisors are using those to connect on a daily basis with students. Certainly not every parent is paying attention to those uh, new social media platforms. Uh, and, and that's okay because we're still connecting with them through Facebook or Instagram or, or Twitter. But you know, for any advice I would want to pass along as somebody who's not uh, using it regularly, but maybe trying to develop a strong presence, I would say start with the things that you want to celebrate with your families uh, and then start following things that you're interested in as well. Being able to follow other groups, other schools. Uh, it's not about competition. It's really about growing your own um, your knowledge base and being able to tell your story and, and you get great ideas when you start to follow other people in the profession. Absolutely. And what I appreciate that both of you said there is when we talk about the impact it has on your building culture, I think a lot of times we naturally think about celebrating and having fun. But another piece of that culture that's important is, as you mentioned, that professional learning or that, um, uh, that, that, that growth mindset of using it to learn and to have some of these chats with your teachers or having them watch their administrators engage with other things. That's, a, that's an important piece of culture as well. So thanks for sharing. Um, if you're willing to kind of uh, let us get a look behind the social media curtain, um, how does this work? How are you able to engage with uh, your stakeholders so much? Is this um, something that you guys both individually post? Do you have a, a shared account that maybe some on your admin team or a secretary helps with? What does that process uh, look like? And you want to, uh, Jason, and share what West Ottawa's strategy is with that? Sure. It, um, it's long been the practice. Um, we, all of us administrators have our own personal Twitter accounts, but we all share the West Ottawa High School account. Uh, and, you know, I think, you know, back when when things were a little bit more normal and there were events happening at night, um, depending on who was at an event, we could we could tweet it out. And so uh, that's worked really well. I, you know, um, Jason also mentioned in, when he was talking about it being a district initiative. And I and I would completely agree with that, that um, your culture is really uh, only as strong as the district culture, uh, because the students are coming through from the elementary to the middle school to the high school. And so the, the, the branding, the hashtag go well for us has been really strong um, district wide, but yeah, there, there's a number of us behind the scenes that are, are, uh, are tweeting. I, I will say this. I, I think um, you need to have, if, if the high school account is the only person tweeting in our building, 
then it's it's probably not going to be a very powerful culture. Where what really drives it is when uh, teachers are tweeting and you're doing more retweeting from a building account. When students are tweeting and you're doing more of retweeting, or even even parents, that's that that's where the next level, um, you know, kind of com a community. Um, effort happens is when is when it's the high school account is used more as a retweet right uh it sounds simple but but that's really where you see mm -hmm. it take the the leap to the next level mm -hmm. I, I would agree uh, and jason we are uh very similar in that it, it's it's fun for me to get tagged in a post by a teacher um who they want to you know they, they want to show something off in the classroom that they're doing or uh something that one of their students did it's fun for me to get tagged because then all I have to do is retweet it. And, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not creating a lot of content then, but I'm still giving them affirmation that I, I see you kids. I see you. Uh, I'm excited about that. And I want to, I want to share with my audience as well, but I do, um, manage my own social media account. All of my administrative teams manage their own social media accounts. We do at the district, we do have a, a public relations director that manages the district level account, but we didn't want to have families get confused with, do I have to follow every building as well? So we really honor the district communication and then following individual building leaders as, as well. But we, uh, we're responsible for that, that content that we, um, we develop on our own accounts. Thank you for sharing. Um, I, I naturally always think of, especially for people who maybe are going to start off and they want to start using social media, because believe it or not, there are still <laughs> many schools or administrators that aren't using social media. They aren't engaging with it. And I think they naturally think of, oh, I've got to be the person that's taking the photo every time and creating content, as you mentioned. But like both of you suggested, there's a lot of power that next level uh, comes from just engaging through maybe replying to somebody that tags you in something or simply retweeting. So you don't have to be the uh, the creator of every single good news item in your building or your or district. If you can get others to do it, I think that's a really, really powerful statement. So as we look at um, its impact on culture, and you talked about this when we first started, kind of how you got to this point. So um, can you just talk about it like what is it meant for your school in terms of maybe for your students, we can start there and then we can go into your, your parents and your, your teachers. What do they say? I mean, how much do they, do they think it's really important? How, how have they bought into this idea? It sounds like they are because they're tagging you in these posts, but can you just talk about why, um, or some of the, give some examples about how it has had a positive impact on your building. And then from that, we're going to transition into, I'm sure there still are some negative side effects that occur occasionally, but let's start with the positive one first. How uh, can you just give some examples of how that's how it's made a, a positive uh, difference? Sure, I, I can I can start first. I I just you know culture is so important in education and probably more important now than it's ever been. The culture and and how people are feeling within within the school community and, and including the parents. Um, and so one of the things that um, you see through through Twitter is just uh, people coming together and celebrating and telling our story. And, and we live in a, in a world where so much of the news and so much of the stories that are told out there are negative and people don't really know what happens in school buildings in, um, across districts and, and by the, using Twitter, we can tell our story. It's the it's a, an area where we can control what is being told about what's happening in our schools and, and then to celebrate that. And, and what has really been fun to watch is when parents and students, community members are the ones that are kind of pushing up these celebrations and, um, you know, telling our story. And, and it's just, it's, you, you, you feel the unity um, in that. And like I said, I keep saying the hashtag go, whoa. Um, and to people outside of West Ottawa, it might, it might be, a, uh, you know, not as, uh, meaningful, but to hear hashtag go well means something and people take pride in it. And that, and that's all part of the culture. I can add, add to that. Um, being able to tell your story is just absolutely necessary. And 
uh, we've used that to make sure our our community hears from us when when we have good news to share and be the first one to share the good news and and really put students and staff in the spotlight. It's not it's not about it's not about me. My social media feed isn't a, isn't it about you know, my my selfies. It's about telling the story of my building. However, what I've learned is that it, being a, a building leader in a community, people do want to know who you are as a person, not just what you do with, with the, the students, but they want to know that they can, they can trust, they can relate to you. And so I do, if you, if you look at my social media feed and, um, you know, we talk about different platforms, um, Twitter is a very professional platform for me. Um, I've I used Instagram to kind of blend my, my, who I am on the outside with my, with my school life. And so I'll post pictures of, of me with, with my kids or on the, on the water in the summertime or doing some yard work. Um, and those are the things that I think really can make a big impact on your community culture when they see who you are as a person, uh, that you're not just trying to uh, put a fa facade up, but uh, there's some genuine relational um, depth that you can build with social media. And I know it's, it's, it's scary for the, for the first time you're posting pictures of you with, without a, a shirt and tie on and you got uh, you know, a t-shirt in your backyard. And, uh, but that, that relational um, accessibility, I think, has gone a long way when you let people know that we are just, we are real humans too. And uh, we've got these, these lives that we're trying to balance in addition to our work. That brings me to another question I was going to ask you guys anyway. So um, this is a good segue because again, there are people like you mentioned, Jason, that are maybe scared, scared of that, or they automatically think of all the negative or the bad things that can happen. Or maybe they say, I don't want to show my personal side, or I want my account to be locked so I can only approve, which is a fine approach for some based mm -hmm. on, on that. But um, it sounds like you do find power in being able to share the personal side uh, pictures of your kids so they can see you without the professional gear on. And as you mentioned, um, you probably get a lot of comments on that too. It probably, you probably, they probably heard from your parents or your students that, uh, that appreciate that as you mentioned. And I would just curious, Jason at West Ottawa, do you do the same thing? Cause I know you have your own account. Do you find that does help you talk about the lions winning or losing the game and, and some things like that? Do you find that it helps you as well? It, absolutely. Uh, Jason brought up a great point. It, you know, we, we are human too. And I, and I, we, we, um, you know, people appreciate seeing that. So there, there's a balance. Um, you know, I don't, I, I, like Jason said, my Instagram is probably more of my uh, personal uh, pictures, but I do try to um, put stuff on Twitter as well. That, that is personal, um, you know, uh, took my daughter to an Notre Dame women's basketball game, posted on there. It's just good. It's good for people to see we're human too. And uh, we're, we're living lives beyond, um, you know, this, the school building as well. So you've done a really great job engaging, building this up in, with your teachers, your students, your community members. So do some of those uh, non-appropriate uh, engagement still happen, even for two pros like yourself in terms of a student using the hashtag the wrong way or, or getting involved in social media inappropriately. Does that still happen? And just how do you typically handle that? Uh, I'll jump in. Uh, yes, it, it happens. It has happened, probably will happen in the future. Um, and it's, uh, I think it's, it's one of those things that if if you're really scared about it and you're you're worried and you don't want to have to deal with those kind of conflicts, then it might be an excuse for somebody to disengage, not not in, not uh, participate in a social media, um, you know, a digital presence. But I think the pros outweigh the the cons all the time in, in this, because this is a world that our kids are are living in. And as educators, we have a great opportunity to work with them when those mistakes are made and those hurtful comments are made, when we're tagged in pro, uh, posts that are inappropriate, we have the opportunity to step in and help them learn from those, those mistakes, learn who they hurt, learn where their 
or their thoughts and their inappropriate actions were coming from and help them you know, just grow their own mindset, grow their own um, responsibility and accountability towards what they're publishing. So it's happened, unfortunately it's happened. Uh, and like I said, it, it probably might happen again, um, but it, it hasn't stopped me from wanting a, a digital presence because I think our, our students need to see uh, appropriate use and, and they need to be held accountable when, when they're not using it appropriately. Awesome. How about Jason for you? It, it, yeah, it, it, absolutely. Uh, I, I think there's always the fear that, um, you know, someone could post something inappropriate, tag, tag, um, us use the hashtag. I will say that I feel like um, the incidents are much less uh, of the, in the last couple of years, you know, we, um, we still have our, our um, you know, hundreds of snow day prognosticators out there, but um, you, you know, I, part of it might've been a little bit of our fault when we, when, when we started in the Twitter world, it really, it was a teenager's home, right? It, it, and we entered their home when we, when we first started this and we probably tried to force it a little bit with student and engagement with us. Um, we learned from it. And, you know, I mentioned earlier, I feel like we're in a pretty good balance right now where we let them celebrate with us. We let them tell their stories when they want to, uh, but we are not going to force it. Um, they, they um, you know, deserve the respect. And if, if, it's, if they want to join us on this social media, they can join us. And, and that's probably a learning um, curve we've had over the last few years. But I, I you know, uh, as Jason said, the one or two negative things that may happen uh, shouldn't shouldn't stop someone from joining this this digital presence because it is it is really awesome when um, hundreds and hundreds of people see what's going on in our schools on a daily basis through Twitter. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So if we happen to have somebody that's listening to this right now and they say, man, you guys are making some really good points, but I'm just I'm still not quite sure if I want to dip my toe in the social media water, starting uh, Jason at West Ottawa, um, what, what simple advice would you tell them? First, a simple steps, uh, creating a, a Twitter account, make sure you put a profile pic. You don't want someone that has the egg profile. Um, and then, you know, I think it's the, the, the simplest thing you can do and the best way to get started is just tweet out a compliment to someone. Say something nice, congratulate someone, um, tell a teacher how awesome uh, you saw a lesson and um, how great they're doing. That's the simplest thing you can do. And at the end of the day, who doesn't like receiving a compliment? And it always feels good to give a compliment. So um, I think that's the best way to get started. It, um, it kind of, it's an easy step and everyone feels good afterwards. Awesome, how about you, Jason? I would, I would add to that. Yes, create an account. And step one is just create an account. And I, I, there's probably somebody within your circle of influence that could help you set that up. And I, I would also encourage people to, to follow a couple of organizations or, or people. Um, and Ryan, you're not, you didn't uh, prep me to say this ahead of time, but I would say follow MASSP uh, just to see what kind of, of uh, information um, is being shared and what, what you can, can grow from. Um, and it's okay to, it's called lurking, just kind of watching and seeing what, what's happening in the digital world before you take that first step and post. Um, but yes, make it, make it a celebration, make it something fun that's gonna uh, gain some attention, whether it's a student accomplishment, giving staff some, some kudos for things that they're doing in the classroom um, and, and start slow, um, start positive and uh, it's gonna be okay. There's lots of people who took this first step. I, I remember my very first post and didn't know if I did it right, didn't know if I was gonna spell everything right. And I, please don't spell check all of my posts because you'll see some mistakes in the past, but it's okay. It's, uh, it's a great way to, to connect, get your story out and do some, uh, some celebrating. Awesome. And although I will post this in on the website and within the, on Twitter, I'll make sure that you guys get tagged, but can you just also share your actual Twitter account handle or, um, or if you want to share the school or both or a hashtag. So Jason sticking with you at Howell, can you share that information real quick? Sure. My, my Twitter handle is at Howell Schrock. That's H O W E L L 
S C H R O C K. Uh, you could also follow um, Howell Public Schools. Um, our superintendent does a lot of great posting. So once you follow either one of Howell Public Schools or Aaron McGregor or myself, you, you'll see a lot of our administrative team and staff um, celebrate the great things that are happening in, in our district. All right. And how about Mr. Reineke for you? Yeah, I love it. If, if people follow me and I'll follow them back at Reineke Woe, R-E-I-N-E-C-K-E-W-O. Awesome. Well, thanks again, uh, guys, for being here. I know you're super, super busy, so I appreciate you being here. Um, go ahead. I was gonna say, I just appreciate uh, giving the opportunity to chat about this, uh, Jason and, and or Ryan and Jason, both connecting with you guys. Um, and also just wanted to say thank you to MASSP for all of the support that you give administrators, uh, especially during this time. Um, so happy to be here. Thank you. Um, uh, this is going to wrap up this episode of the MASSP podcast. Again, you can find all of our podcasts by visiting MASSP.com slash podcast or wherever podcasts can be found, including the Apple Podcast Store, uh, Libsyn, and on YouTube. And have a great day. Uh -huh.